Hey Keys Mods fans, this is David Fine. I want to welcome you because I have in my hand here one of the rarest butterflies in the United States and definitely the rarest butterfly in Florida as far as I'm concerned. It is the Amethyst Hair Streak. Chlorostrum in my CDs. I've got over 1,000 hours in the field looking for this butterfly. And in our last episode, we caught, Lorenzo and I caught three of them. Three females, guys. I believe we got three females. Two for sure. The, the other one is could be a male. I, I'll, I'll see. But today's episode, guys, we are going to try and get set up to lay eggs, guys. And what I'm going to do, I've actually got all three of them in this little container here. This is actually a little cooler. And I want to show you what I got. I just have a little ice pack on the bottom or one of those gel ice packs. And the, each butterfly is in its own little cup with a lid. And the, the ice pack will keep them nice and cool and keep them from, from you know, flying around and whatnot. But guys, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you guys how we're setting up small butterflies like the amethyst hair streak for egg laying. And so I've got some of the host plant here. We're going to check that out. And I've got some materials here. And we're going to show you what that's all about here shortly. All right, guys, we've got an amethyst hair streak female. She's on the blooms of this sea grape, and we have a feeling that this is her larval host plant. So we're going to see if she'll lay some eggs for us. Guys, stay tuned to see if this beautiful butterfly lays us any eggs. It'll be a great day. All right, guys, we've got all three amethyst hair streaks inside of this cup. We've got one, let's, let's see if we can actually show you all three of them. We got one down there in the bottom, one there in the mid range on the branch, and there's a third down on the bottom here. Let me, let's see if we can do it this way. There's one, look at that. That thing is gorgeous. She's resting on the bottom. We got another one, a little bit of an older. Uh, there we got two females there. Dude, she might be laying an egg right there, guys. And I got a little excited there. All right, guys. Now, usually it takes a little bit of time for the butterflies to get comfortable with their surrounding, but these buds, of these flowers is exactly where a hair streak would lay eggs in nature. So we just gotta let them become comfortable with their surroundings. Hopefully this one down here crawls up. That's fresh, that's a fresh specimen right there. Um, and then finds its way up onto here. Guys, here's what we're gonna do. Um, the trick is with these guys, you wanna put them in dappled sunlight. They respond to sunlight. So I've got in my laundry room, I've got a, a window sill here and the Western sun comes down and be, beams a little bit here. And what I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave them right here. And then hopefully that's enough to get, to stimulate them to lay some eggs. So now it's just a waiting game, guys. We'll feed them sugar water. Uh, in fact, they should have enough food in there because they're, there's, there's blooms of the sea grape that are actually opening and they use that as their nectar source as well. So if they lay eggs on this stuff, guys, it shouldn't take too long. I'd say by tomorrow, if they're going to lay eggs, we're going to start seeing it. If we don't get any eggs by tomorrow, I'll investigate it. If there's no eggs in here by tomorrow, I will um, go get some buttonwood blossoms and put them in here because they've been known to eat buttonwood as well so uh, that's a pretty common plant but we've got a couple females that are already very active so let's see if they're going to give us some eggs guys if you want to see what happens with our amethyst hair streak females um tune in guys don't forget to give me a like like the video thumbs up uh don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out how these girls do. See, Let's see if we can get some eggs from one of the rarest butterflies in North America. All right, guys, it's been almost two days, almost 48 hours, probably 38 hours, actually. 
40 hours, maybe. And I'm going to run you through what's going on, but we're going to check to see if there's eggs. But here's the setup I have, guys. I have a 16-ounce cup with the stems of the of the blooms of the um, sea grape inside. Some water in in a little Dixie in a little tiny cup inside of the 16-ounce cup so that they stay fresh. I have a, a screen mesh over the top with a little hole cut in it so that I can stick a Q-tip with some sugar water in there for them to feed. Unfortunately, pharaoh ants were attracted to the sugar. A few of them made it into the cup, but before it got crazy, I put my cup inside of a bowl of water so that the pharaoh ants could no longer get into it without crossing the moat. <laughs> I keep this little lid like this, covering some of it because I am keeping it on a windowsill inside and I don't want the air conditioning to dry out the bug, so it has to be humidity. So guys, now we're gonna go in and check and see what's up. I don't need my, my moat anymore right now, but we're gonna go and see what's going on here with our hair streaks. do I'm gonna try and get them on some sugar water here feeding and then that will allow me the opportunity to go into the cup and inspect and see if there's any eggs laid on these blooms all right guys I got all four hair streaks feeding here they're all alive they're feeding Beautiful thing. Four female chlorostrum in my seeds. <laughs> Happily feeding on sugar water. While I check their host plant. Okay. Now, it's time to take a look here, guys, and see if we can find anything. I'm not seeing anything that resembles eggs, guys. And take this out of the cup. Do this the right way. Pharaoh ant. Get out of my bugs. Okay, so I don't see any eggs, but it doesn't mean there's none on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the stems and put them in water picks, put them in another container, and put all new food in or all new egg laying material in for these hair streaks. I'm gonna include some buttonwood blooms. I had one stem in here, but I clipped some fresh stems and I'm gonna put these in another container and just wait. And maybe the eggs were hidden so deep that I couldn't find them. And we're just gonna wait it out and see if anything hatches and we'll start seeing frass at the bottom of the container if, if there's if there's eggs, so that's the next step, guys. Unfortunately, I don't see any eggs. I wish I could find them. All right, so these I'm just gonna lay here in this container. And if, if caterpillars are in there, 
or eggs are in there, they'll hatch and they'll start feeding and then we'll start seeing frass on the paper towel. And we'll just wait it out and see what happens. Maybe there's eggs in there and just can't see them. In the meantime, I am going to yeah, see grape drops all of these little block blooms here. I've got a couple couple little sprigs of sea grape. I'm gonna reintroduce because I'm still still suspecting sea grape as a host. But I'm also but I'm also gonna try some buttonwood blooms. So these little these little flower buds here are what they supposedly lay eggs on. And supposedly buttonwood is a is a host plant for this species. So we're gonna find out and I'm gonna put all these buttonwood new little buds in here and see if that makes a difference, guys. Let's see if we can get these girls to lay eggs. I'll fill you in as they do. Okay, getting eggs from Mercedes. It's been two days. I have four females in the 16 ounce cup. I've got uh, blooms of the um, sea grape and buds of the buttonwood in a four ounce cup inside of the 16 ounce cup. The lid of the four ounce cup squeezes tight to the side so they can't fall in. Uh, it keeps them in this top thing. Um, I have a screen on top with a Q-tip with sugar water. I hand feed them twice a day with sugar water. They're crawling around very happily. They're actually very plump. They're feeding nicely. I have them, uh, oh, I have them in this cup here with a moat so that ants can't get in. <laughs> I, I've had problems with ants in the past, so they'd have to cross the moat. Um, I have them on a table outside in the sun, but I have this, one of our old bucket light traps blocking the direct sun so they don't overheat. Uh, if you have any suggestions, I would really hate to have these hair streaks not lay eggs. I got four female Mycetes. Um, <laughs> any suggestions, please advise. If there's anything I'm missing, I'd love to hear about it. All right, folks, I'm going to kind of do a little dive into here and see if we can find any hair streak eggs. One thing I do see, there's a caterpillar of a moth on the sea grape, which we'll take a look at that as well and see what that turns out to be. But that's, he's making this little webbing, but you can see the caterpillar here. Some kind of pyralid. Anyway, we'll find out what that is. All right. But we're not here to look for moth caterpillars, guys. We are here because we are in hunt for hair streak eggs. And we're hoping, uh, I have my female's feet. Oh, wait a minute. Is that an egg? I think we got an egg. I think we got eggs. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do, guys. It's tough for me to confirm, but I believe it's these green things that are wedged in between these flower buds may be eggs. Let me let me see if I can get this stem out and cut this piece off. And let me see if I can confirm. All right, guys. I am zooming in on what I believe is a Mycetes egg. If that is, it's incredible how they tuck them in to these little crevices of the buds. It makes it almost impossible to see them, which I guess is the point. Let's see. This is hard. Okay, this is so tiny, man. Um, I'm gonna try and get my my photo, my camera out, and see if I can get some good macro images, and see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right, guys, I'm I'm cropping in on what has got to be an egg. 
my phone, my iPhone just can't handle any more zooming. But that little green thing right in there, I believe, is the egg of a chlorostrum in my C's. Let me try and see if I can get at it. Man, it's tough. All right, guys, after reviewing with a highly magnified um, photographs, it looks like we have chlorostrum and mycetes eggs. They are like this, this deep green coloration. I got one right here, I'll zoom in. They lay them, they tuck them really deep in the little crevices in between the buds and the stems. And that's why they're so hard to see. I'm almost wondering if I've got a bunch more and I just don't even know they're there. It's so tiny, guys. And I I'm super excited. Um, but we are going to take these little, these little tiny little pieces of sea grape bloom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in this four ounce cup with paper towel on the bottom. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to look for over the next few days, we're gonna look for frass and see if <laughs> if frass starts to accumulate, then we'll know we have baby caterpillars. I believe the caterpillars burrow into the blooms. I've seen a lot of holes in the blooms. So we'll see how that goes, guys. I'll let you know as this develops. Mm -hmm. 